Okay. All right. We're here. So we're back on our mastermind leadership third Tuesday group. What what is our official name, Paula? Because we just kind of put everything into one pot. We need a we need a team name, a mastermind group name. But... I think we're the Power Rangers. Oh, it's still Power Rangers. Okay. It's like Power I mean, Rangers I... 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> we can be whatever we want to be. Maybe Steroid Power Rangers or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm sure but, people will be joining us. You know, it's just five o'clock here on the West Coast. So everybody's wrapping things up still. So uh, I, I do want to say I did a podcast interview with a dentist CPA. Um, he goes way back. He, he's amazing. Art uh, Wiederman. And mm-hmm. I thought it was gonna be like 35 minutes talking about Triple P 2.0 and employee retention tax credit. And it was like, we were trying to squeeze it in in an hour. It was jam packed. And so yeah. the the information is just overwhelming on some things. And I, I, Dr. Netsley turned me on to something today and I was not quite understanding what he was saying to me. But um, when I talked with Art, he was able to explain it in a way that, that helps. So anybody who's watching this recording, if you file for Triple P 2.0 and the prior one let's say you your net income was less than hundred thousand a year for whatever reason you have your expenses set whatever it is you have your income below hundred thousand you couldn't quite qualify for a full hundred thousand your net income now they're allowing a full you you can get to hundred thousand because you can use your gross collections as your application process so if it's worth you know three to five thousand dollars for you to apply for a different amount and that was your uh you know, your situation, you can apply and get a different amount. So that's good news. Oh. Yeah. And then the employee retention tax credit is very complicated. If you've already filed for triple P forgiveness and you've all f- filed for your taxes, forget about it. You can't do it because it's going to require an extension, but it is worth about $5,000 per employee. And once you pay, if, if you qualify for the max on all wow. your employees, it, they pay your, what they, they take back, they, they credit you back on your payroll taxes for like Medicare and a couple other, one other thing like Social Security or something. But then the rest is a cash back refund to you of 5,000 per employee, which I didn't know. I thought it was just going to credit your payroll taxes this year. So that link will be up for others to, to look at and listen to that because it's very detailed and I'd rather you hear it straight from him. But uh, it is possible to have paid your employees with Triple P money and qualify for ERTC, but it is a dance. So, yeah. Okay. Now, let's jump in. Sound good? Yeah, I'm excited about the retreat. Yeah, it's coming up. We have um, most of our speakers on tonight, so they can give us a little preview of what's coming. I'm excited about that. So who should we go for? Dr. Bulsara, I love the image that you have on there. <laughs> Sorry. It looks like two to... eyes and a nose there. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep my phone prop, but it, it won't stay up, so. That's okay. It's <laughs> all right. Too, I'm too, yeah. That's okay. It's pretty interesting. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Okay. So, um, Eric, who, who should we ask to go first? Well, I think Dr. Pierre, he's, he's looks like he's raring to go so he could give yeah. his, his spiel today. And first, okay. in, he's always, he's always head of the class first in line, you know, overachiever. Right. Right. <laughs> so it, this it, is, uh, this is for our, my bedtime. <laughs> I know. It is I know, East Coast. A couple others could say that too on this call. Um, uh, so it's our mastermind leadership retreat. We have this every year. We've been having this every year. Wow, we might have skipped a couple of years, but it started back in '02, '03, or something like that, where we started leadership retreats. And um, then I picked it up again and did it a little bit differently in '09 with the encouragement of some of you. And so it's evolved over the years and the last few years we've just been having more of the mastermind actual mastermind where all of you are sharing in the group so it's been it's been a lot of fun hearing what everybody has is doing in their practice that's unique and we try to go with topics that we hear um requests for all the time so um it's it's a friday saturday 
on Zoom, and it's from 10 Eastern Time to 5 Eastern Time. You will get 14 CE credits from, thankfully, Dr. Ted Johnson with his International Partnership for the Study of Occlusion course, who sponsors our CE for us. So this year, one of our famous speakers is Dr. David Peer from Maine, who is a mentor to us as as well as um, a fun person. We just we just love you, Dave. And you're out there, you're cutting edge, you're doing all kinds of things. And one of the things that's cutting edge about you is insurance free, right? That's right. Yes. And your in-house mem in house membership program that you started. I mean, we had that call back in 2011 or something. And you while. all rolled this out and it just exploded and you are now helping other practices with that called Dan Vantage, and most of you have heard of that. And you just told me you hit a milestone the other day. That's right. We, we got our thousandth patient. One thousand members on his. Wow! Membership. Congratulations. Incredible. Yeah, cool. So tell us a little bit. Give us some bullet points of what you're going to talk about at the retreat. Certainly, where I'm going to start actually is I would like to ask all of you do are any of you members of delta or any ppo if you can those that don't have the picture none of you are members yeah i think dr voros is yeah okay some yeah. who uh, may not be great. on on audio right now or yeah are members. okay yeah. it's it's that's really uh, obviously as you all know this is the cream of the crop because that's not the normal answer but even when you aren't a member of, of delta or any insurance company have you ever looked at the cost of insurance to your practice? Yeah. What it actually costs you to deal with insurance patients. When I've done that in my practice, I've come up with it cost me about twelve percent. When you when you consider the extra time it takes, when you consider the denials of benefits, and then you have to go back after the patients, uh, without even being uh, a member of uh, of any PPOs, where 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 insurance free. So when I looked at that, Ted and uh, Kevin and, and Dan Steinke and I got together and we started figuring out how can we do this? How can we make some form of a membership plan that would not be a giveaway? Because every membership plan I'd ever seen was a deep discount plan. It's kind of like a lost leader, charge $17 a month and give people free hygiene and free exams and free x-rays and lose money on that so you get the, the money on the other side. And I'm not a discount office, and I don't think any of you are either. So I looked at it and we thought, how can we? So this is a big part of what we'll be talking about. Why can, is a membership plan not a discount plan? It's actually a plan that's meant to increase your bottom line, not, not be a lost leader. So step number one is going to be, how do you set your fees such that you aren't losing money on, on your membership plan, that your membership plan, you're happy to give the money, the, the benefits, because you're getting paid for it. Number two is going to be what the patient has to do to earn those fees. And this is something I've not seen in any membership plan and all the membership plans I've looked at, is the patient has to make a commitment to you also in order to get those benefits. So. The, the bottom line or the beginning of this whole thing is going to be the key ingredients of a successful membership plan, how to set that up. The next thing is, who's your target market? Who are your patients? Now, I live in Maine where teeth are optional and therefore most people don't have dental insurance. Uh, if you live in a, in a high insurance market where maybe 80% of your patients in your practice, in my case, it's only 40% of my patients in my practice have, have uh, insurance. But if many of you are in a place where you have a lot more than that, how do you get these non-insured patients? And how, how are you going to, to build your membership plan with them? Um, this, the next thing is um, we're going to talk about presenting the membership plan. When, that when you present a treatment plan for $5,000, why is it that you should be thrilled to write off 600 of that? That's a that's an ex excellent question, because if you're yes. if you're on a uh, an insurance plan, an insurance contract, 
how much are you writing off when you write that off? <laughs> so, no. yeah. yeah sure. And even when you're not, like I said, if you have an insurance patient and you're, yeah. you're dealing with insurance companies, that 12% represents that $600. Yeah. The, the next thing is also, we talked, I, I mentioned that we're gonna talk about how to set your fees to make this profitable for you and not just a loss leader. But the other thing is why you don't have to do a deep discount to, to make your membership plan work. In other words, those benefits, I, I talked to a, another dentist who was giving 25% away of everything mm -hmm. that they do. Wow. You don't need to do that. But the mm -hmm. biggest thing, and we'll talk about that, is why you don't use a percentage at all. Use it in your head, but not to your patients. Your patients should not see a percentage. They should see a dollar amount and why that works. And here's one of the things that most people don't think about is why is a monthly plan better than an annual plan? Mm. And we'll be talking about that quite a bit. That's good. Uh, I think that is That's the, good. the main That's really good. that I'll be talking about. So, so I have a quick question for you. Would you say that um, having a membership plan makes it easier to drop insurance? Like if you want to get off of a contract, or does it make it, does it not matter? It, it's hugely different. The more you, obviously, I mean, it's just simple math. The higher percentage of your patients that are fee for service, the easier it is to drop your bottom seller dwellers. And uh, the, the getting people on your membership plan is a way to bring in the non-insured patients. Right. It, it's a weird thing. I, you know, patients, well, it, it's that, why is it that we get this stuff in the mail from Patterson that says this month, I'm going to get 5% off on everything I buy. So I'm going to go crazy and buy 10 times more than I need because I'm getting 5%. <laughs> but, but that's human nature. Yeah. As soon as we do something that says these people feel like they can't come to the dentist if they don't have insurance, now all of a sudden they feel like they can. And as you start to build those people, the more like with a thousand patients, on my membership plan, if I had a thousand patients on the the bottom plans, I'd get rid of those thousand patients. There you go. I, I have a question, follow up question to Senator Paula's question. Yeah. Senator Pierre, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a representative. Oh, Representative Pierre, <laughs> when and I just want to clarify, you talked about removing Delta from your practice those patients are still insured by Delta and still come to see you. They didn't go away. Yeah. That's part one. Okay. Yeah. And then part two, but they can't necessarily, even though the check doesn't come to the, the provider with Delta a lot of the times, um, the, they can't sign up for a membership plan because they still have Delta as a, as insurance. And right. That's, that's a good point, Eric. And that's, that is basically true. Uh, in general, I don't recommend at all trying to sign up your insurance patients. However, some of your patients who have really lousy insurance, I have one today. She had the uh, retirement, you know, the med Medicare. Mm. I now can go to the dentist because Medicare is gonna give me a dental benefit. Yeah. We looked at the numbers of what they give and I looked, we looked at the membership plan and the membership plan was better so they and the uh, Medicare plan, which would have cost me more money. I went to the membership plan, saved them money and I made more money. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. Awesome, very excited to hear. Great. Thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to, I'm, I'm also looking forward to hearing from all of you. Yeah. Does, that, yeah. does that mean Dave goes first when we have the leadership retreat? Does he go April 23rd? Um, no, I don't think <laughs> get, get him out of the way quickly so that we can move on to the good stuff. Uh, no. <laughs> Draw I straws. Think, I, think I'm, I have to go back and look at the timeline, but I'm thinking it might be Dr. David Sutton that goes first. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he might need to go really soon because I've been watching the crypto numbers and they're creeping back up there after that dip last week. So I'm excited to hear what he's got to say too. So. So Dr. David, why don't you share with us about uh, some bullet points about cryptocurrency. It's really hot topic right now. And you mentioned this to me a uh, month, six weeks ago, and it piqued my interest. And so um, I'd love to know what you're into. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a newbie in it, and I'm by far no expert in it. Uh, I, I dug into it back into uh, 
probably uh, June of last year before it really took off. Yeah. And my motivation behind that was all this uh, incentive money that the government's uh, printing out, and they just did another one point nine trillion dollars. Not billion, like the other two. No, not me. Tri- not one point nine trillion. Trillion, yeah. <laughs> and they're just printing it. There's there's no backup of the currency at all. And all you got to do is look at what happened to Venezuela back in the day where they had to start weighing their money when they went to the markets in order to figure out how much uh, something cost to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I'm just afraid that uh, our, our currency is no longer be the dominating world um, standard for currency in the world. And I, Joseph's heard me talk about this quite a bit, but that just sparked my interest, and uh, 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 and I'm I'm assuming that most people are not too far behind me and and not knowing a lot about it. And the reason I said yes to Paul, of course, is it gives me good reason to do a lot more research. <laughs> and uh, uh, my goals is is uh, uh, primarily to uh, uh, get everybody on board about a little bit of what what cyber currency is and uh, uh, basically information where they can learn more about if they want to and um, give them some options on that. Uh, But I really hadn't set up a lot of agenda yet. I'm still working on that, but it's going to be just a super beginner's course to where I want to give some good lead points to where people want to start doing some research. If they want to actually buy it, uh, there I'll give them the exchange places where they can go buy it. Uh, I will uh, give them the information to where if they want to look at and study charts and such like that, they can go do that. If they don't want to get directly into cyber currency, uh, there's a, a trust company called uh, Grayscale that's on the New York Stock Exchange, and it's uh, 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 handled just like any other stock market. You buy and sell on the New York Stock Exchange and you're not really buying the, the cyber currency at all. You're, you're buying shares into the trust company. And that, of course, that's all the trust is, is just Bitcoin or Ether or Litecoin or some other coin. And of course, its prices in the stock significantly correlate with Bitcoin. And, uh, 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 so if they're uncomfortable with actually getting the cyber currency and actually buying the coins, they can uh, uh, go that route. Well, in that way, they're fully insured on their investment. Yeah, what I'm actually doing, uh, really <laughs> concentrating on, I actually set up a, a, a Roth IRA for this year. I've always done the traditional, and I found out that my uh, uh, income would allow me to do a, a Roth. So. I set up a Roth this year, and, and so I'm dedicating that Roth to uh, cyber currency investing because any profits I make on it are tax-free. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, you actually have to file taxes for your your cyber currency profit. Yeah, you do. It's just, you know, it's just a market that if you're getting to cyber currency, you still just like the stock exchange, the cyber currency exchange, you still have to file taxes. And all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's real confusing. Uh, each there's over eight thousand coins easily, and they all serve a different purpose. The only one that really serves no purpose at all is Bitcoin. Okay? <laughs> it's just there, and I really hate Bitcoin because mm-hmm. utility-wise, it's worthless. Whereas all the other coins, you're actually doing something with them. And I'll, I'll uh, talk a little bit about some of the other coins besides Bitcoin. Uh, but uh, it, it's just a, an interesting subject that that it's a good way to diversify your economics is what it is. That it helps give a hedge against loss of income due to inflation or our or, or, or government policies or anything like that yeah. and in countries where where the economy has collapsed 
Bitcoin is cyber currency is a big thing because that people can go purchase that instead of having their own country's currency and kind of protect their wealth that way. It, it does have its purpose. Are you going to talk about NFTs at all or no? There is no NFT or EFT for cyber currency. Oh, no. Uh, NFT, non-fungible tokens. Oh, NFT. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll probably talk about that some too. That's a new and unique thing. Yeah. It's uh, collectible stuff for arts and things like that. Uh, you also got NFTs for a, a new type of, uh, of uh, internet out there. I don't know if you're aware of that or not called. The, the coins uh, labeled FIL file hmm. or field. And its its goal, the purpose in being made is uh, is to have a decentralized internet. And this is the problem we get into with cyber currency. It's, it's a lot like dentistry where we're talking to our patients about onlays, inlays, uh, uh, and the patient's going, they don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's yeah. just whole new terminology, whole new definition. <laughs> and when you talk about blockchain and, and, and decentralization, people, most people don't know what you're talking about. So I'll have to lay a little bit of definitions just to talk about it. But uh, uh, for, for, for here, decentralization is where uh, you have a trustless system. Uh, and blockchain allows a trustless system. Uh, and trustless is wonderful. It doesn't sound like it is, but it's <laughs> wonderful because you can do something. You don't have to trust somebody to get it done. <clears throat> it's like gravity. I could take my pencil that's in my hand and drop it, and I don't have to trust gravity to let it hit the floor. I know what's going to happen. Mm, that's, and that's the way blockchain technology is and decentralization. Whatever you do, you know it's going to happen. You can't take it back. I think decentralization is a key word right now. I'm hearing that a lot. <laughs> well, that there's no government anything. control over decentralization. And, 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 and uh, uh, the world's getting smaller. Uh, borders are getting less, are getting more borderless. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the countries are finding out that they really don't have any control over cyber currency. Some countries have tried to outlaw it and it just doesn't work. Right. Uh, but it's just an interesting subject and I just plan to just uh, do some general topics and, and educate people. And if they want to learn more, give them a good place to start. Uh, Great. You, know, you could educate people on this for, you know, weeks and still not. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I I really appreciate you being willing to talk about it. I mean, it's it's not like you're a financial planner. We're not trying to promote you in any way like that. But you have been doing a lot of research, and I think people need to be introduced to the subject if they haven't been learning about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I so. thought I thought the internet was already decentralized, but it's really not. No. There's, there's there's this huge monster computers, and there's quite a few of them scattered throughout the world, but it's controlled by just a handful of governments really right right uh and with filecoin it, it goes back to home computers control the internet and it <laughs> might be every household controls the internet and so mm -hmm. there's so many people controlling it and if the trustless system you don't have to worry about government shutting down certain websites wow yeah there you go hey has that ever happened <laughs> not uh, the ones that needed to be all right. Well, Dr. Gray just joined us. So hi, Dr. Gray. Thanks for for hopping on for a minute. Um, I, I, Dr. Joseph, would you like to go next and share about 3D printing? Dr. Joseph's going to talk about about that. Anybody using 3D printing? I know some of you don't have your cameras on, but uh, some of you have those already and some are thinking about it. So share with us, Dr. Joseph. What are you doing with 3D All printing? Right. I think I'm here. Everybody hear me all right? Yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of, I guess, the goal of uh, my talk would be to, I guess, you know, we see it advertised and we see it talked a lot. You know, you can't open up, a, uh, I guess, one of the junk journals and see it advertised. Uh, 
so it's kind of a buzzword dentistry. So I just, my goal is that it gives an introduction to everybody. Uh, so they at least understand what applications and uh, give them that baseline knowledge to see if that's something they want to incorporate into their practice, uh, whether it uh, be via a lab uh, or uh, bring it in-house. And I'll talk a little more about uh, easy applications to bring it in-house. Uh, so that's that's my baseline goal of it. I, and I uh, wouldn't call myself a 3D expert. I will uh, link to a couple uh, 3D experts uh, that you can find a lot of information on the internet, a dentist, and, uh, and also some non-dental software that's free uh, that would be good to use, you know, so I'll kind of be teaching a little bit on that. Uh, but I think 3d printing is very on that kind of just edge of, uh, uh, there's just not kind of mainstream. It's kind of probably where, uh, CAD cam milling was, you know, early two thousands. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think it will be a lot more mainstream and in, in house to every office probably. Uh, within the next, uh, you know, 10 years. So uh, basically just to give everybody that awareness, I'll kind of talk a little bit about um, ways you might already be using it with your lab and not, not really even know it. Uh, different types of 3D printers are not all the same. Uh, a big, uh, I also talk about, a, um, I guess, the software is out there because the great thing about 3d printing is not dental. It's just being applied to dental. So there's tons of software where you don't have to pay the, uh, I guess I call it the dental tax or the stupid tax. You know, you buy something for dental, they automatically jack up the price on it because we're all rich dentists. Uh, that was a joke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically. And also the, the, last part of the talk would be more of uh, how would you bring it in-house and what are some easy ways to use it in-house and and I'll talk a little bit about and show some pictures and maybe some videos of what we're doing in our office with it whether it's and, and our main thing is you know, we're printing night guards and uh, uh, you know it's very easy and simple and it's a you know it can easily pay for itself for what you invest uh, but also I'll talk about, you know, dentures and, you know, surgical guides. If you have 3d, uh, uh, x-ray capabilities, then, you know, it's super easy. So it can save you some money there, but that's, that's the main, uh, a gist of it. It can be yeah. as long or as little as you want. I don't, I don't claim to be a complete expert. So if you got a lot of people that are out there doing a lot of surgical guides and stuff like that. Hey, our, uh, that, that's where it mainly got introduced, but now it's kind of expanded ventures. I think so if somebody is out there group wants to chime in. Yeah, I have, I have no uh, zoom ego, so you can talk <laughs> all you want. Well, we're excited that you're going to do this for us. And in case you haven't connected the dots, Dr. David Sutton and Dr. Joseph are father and son and they practice together. So they have a, Top of the line practice over here. You're on mute. Maybe it's, maybe, it's, maybe it's good he's on mute. I don't know. Yeah, I'm the dad, by the way. <laughs> what you need to figure out how to do is how to 3D print your own Bitcoin. That's put your two meetings together and we'll get it knocked out. <laughs> good idea, Eric. Yeah. You may recall Dr. David shared with us last year about ozone, which was perfect timing, right? With uh, you, had, you had a great impact on a lot of practices last year when you shared about ozone. Uh, in the COVID crisis right when that was happening. So uh, so thank you both for being willing to share. All right, Dr. Gray. You're welcome. Dr. Gray, we're thrilled to have you on board with us tonight. And Dr. Gray practices in Birmingham, Alabama area. And Dr. Gray, how many practices do you guys have now? I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see, you're on mute. Let me unmute you or ask you to unmute. Can you there we me? go. There you go. Okay. So yeah, I got speaking, speaking permission from you, Paula. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. How many practices um, do you have now there in Birmingham area? Um, we we have ten, and so it's a multi, 
you know, multi-provider group practice. Um, we're owned by Dennis. Um, I'm one of the one of four partners, and I've been very fortunate to start this whole journey with friends of mine from all the way going back to about the fifth grade. And we went through middle school, high school, uh, college, dental school together. And then we all said, well, we're at the same stage in our life. We've all studied together. So let's jump in the boat and take on some debt and make a go at this thing. Why, why stop now? <laughs> and, and you're the prosthodontist in the practice. So it's a pretty yeah, unique situation right. that you joined a general practice as a prosthodontist. And, and that's been a wonderful thing. It's been a win-win. A win-win. Yeah, really win it has. I mean, traditionally, you know, pros, I think probably going back into the 80s, it was, you know, a lot of referral base. But, you know, the models change for, for dentistry, in my opinion, over time. And so referral based pros is really not, you know, a, a viable avenue for anybody right out of school. I wouldn't recommend that to any resident that finishes a pros residency. <laughs> and instead, um, you know, I kind of took the path of just, you know, partnering with people that I work with and, and have a lot of respect for. And um, we all learn from each other. And uh, it's really just, um, you know, it's been a good thing because I get to work with friends every day. Um, I ask them questions. They ask me questions. And uh, we all we all learn from each other kind of in a group setting. So I'm, I'm really blessed with that, that approach. Yeah. It's worked well. It's been a wonderful thing. I've, I've had the, the privilege of, of being in sort of at the beginning uh, and mm -hmm. watch this thing grow. And it's been amazing. And you've held on to your vision and your values. And um, I see, we, we met each other back in 07, I think, when you were still in school. 06. 06? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yep. It's been a long time. It, it has. I mean, that was... That was a, a really good thing, I think, that came out of um, the first practice that I was in for a year right out of school because, you know, looking back on it, it wouldn't have, you know, getting dental coaching and um, kind of taking that, that avenue wasn't necessarily on my radar and it wouldn't have come natural to me, but I was kind of pushed into it, thankfully, by Dr. Sanderson that I worked with for that first year because he was uh, working with you a good yep. bet. And uh, really kind of saw the value in it. And um, as soon as I got in, in uh, the group practice that I'm in now, starting in 08, I really pushed them. It took a couple of years to get them on board, but I, yeah. I just kept pushing, Paula, Paula, we need to get on board. And next thing you know, in 2010, <laughs> 10 years later, here we are still taking Amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing. And I, I just have to compliment you. I think, uh, Holt, you've been such a great client, and you are probably close to my number one referral source. I mean, you are just <laughs> such a, a great uh, champion for for what you do and for coaching. So I just want to acknowledge you and thank you. And I'm so oh, excited you. you're going to share this year. Some Absolutely. of you have heard of the implant program, the Foundry, and you've done some teaching there as well as UAB. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, just your your cases are phenomenal. And there's a lot of questions about implants and how to treatment plan cases and things like that, and just right. even how to close them, which you're a, a, a DC personality and the DC <laughs> personality is on the task side, not the people side. So you really um, transformed your case presentation skills and things like that. So uh, I want you to share with us a little bit about your questions. And I haven't sent those out yet. Um, okay. But I, I wanted you to talk about them, and then I will send them out probably tomorrow of what you want uh, people to do. So would you share with us yeah, about what you're going to Yeah. That was kind of, um, the, when you first asked me to speak, I mean, I was honored, and I'm happy to do it. Um, and it was, I think it was kind of uh, a broad topic of implants. And I just kind of was driving one day, and I, I, I was just kind of thinking to myself that I really wanted um the presentation that I give or the question and answer session to be as valuable to everybody that's on the call as possible. And with it being such a broad range, um, you know, I, I don't know where everybody stands as far as their comfort level on implant surgery or restoring implants or what they want to get out of, um, out of a presentation. Um, so I think my idea was just, okay, let's shoot out a quick survey. Um, you know, just kind of rank the questions that I have. Um, on a scale of uh, one to five, as far as what appeals to you, what you would like to hear, 
kind of where you currently are and where you want to go. And then um, I can take that information. And, you know, if I see a lot of people that are comfortable restoring implants, then we won't spend a lot of time there. We'll go more towards the, um, the surgical side. Um, if people are wanting more, you know, the restoration side and they're referring out their surgeries, that's fine. Uh, and I'll try to tailor it more towards that. But, you know, I just wanted it to be, in the end, I want it to be valuable to people that I'm presenting to. And so, um, you know, it never hurts to kind of get feedback of what you want to hear before I ramble on about something that doesn't pertain to your interest or your needs. You're just following the natural law of research, aren't you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I told you, he knows his skills. Um, so I put those up for, for just a few minutes so everybody could see the questions and I'll, I'll be sending those out. So please give us some some feedback um, when you get those questions and let us know what you want to hear um, from Holt. So Holt, can you, I know you're good with numbers. I don't know if you want to answer this question or not. You don't have to, but about how many uh, full mouth cases do you do a year? Or have you done overall or do you have any um, kind of question? Yeah, probably. I mean, overall full arch, yeah. like a double full arch. I don't know. 100 um and then you know single arches probably pushing 200 uh total uh you know they don't come i mean i'm not gonna sit here and say oh you know i get those just daily um you know i would say one a month um is realistic yeah. uh, sometimes we have to phase it and kind of space it out uh work towards it i mean realistically it's just you know it's outside of a lot of people's price range just to come up with you know 20 to 40 grand just overnight and some people can do it but most people can't and so and that's okay we just you know i, I kind of take the approach go over the conditions you know partner with the patient show them what i see uh and the assistant's really trying to kind of back me up on that and then say you know help me understand the best way to get to where you want to be based on what you've told me and whatever pace you want to do it is fine um but I wanna... statement. <laughs> yeah that's right. well hold on well hold on Oh, you gotta work. You gotta work on your T's here. You're selling the farm. You know, you're you're, you're letting everything out of the bag here. We gotta <laughs> hold it up. <laughs> this is just a commercial. This isn't. This isn't the whole thing. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. Yeah, this is this is exactly what he does. And you know, tell them is your area an affluent area? When I say Birmingham area, most people think, oh yeah. Are, are you? Yeah, we're in Bessemer, Alabama, um, which is um, not by any means, you know, at the top of the socioeconomic status. Thing. I mean, we have patients that drive in uh, sometimes every once in a while they'll fly in, but it's not that's not very common. But, you know, our bread and butter is your average patient. And so when I hear, uh, you know, some sometimes practices will say, well, well, my, you don't know my patients. I said, well, yeah, <laughs> so you yeah. don't know ours. <laughs> I hear that all the time. <laughs> I would put put our socioeconomic status up against anybody's because, you know, I've had people try to finance sixty dollars over six months, and it's just it's a sad situation. Uh, but at the same time, you know, yeah. some people will surprise you and and mm -hmm. pull out what they need to do to get fixed, and everything in between. And so, you know, it's it's just like uh, I'm sure all of y'all do. We try not to judge, and just what yeah. I do try to judge is how can I help the patient based on the means and what they want and what they need? Mm -hmm. And how can I, you know, make all that come together? Um, that's most effective, you know, in a value form. And we should probably can... talk about how to cash out their crypto so they could pay for their full mouth restoration too. <laughs> That'll right. be the other thing. Merge all this together. Yeah. Yeah. The I new financing have... option. That's going to be <laughs> our new financing options, accepting crypto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there not you a, go. That's not a bad idea. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I can talk funny. about that some if you want me to. How how yes, best to do that? Course. Absolutely. Yeah. I know, Doctor Doctor David. That would be awesome. I mean, Tesla's taking crypto. Why can't we? We so. can. We can. Yeah, of course we can. All right. Well, thank you so much, Doctor Gray, for joining in tonight and sharing a little bit. And I will send those surveys out um, yeah, you're tomorrow. So. All right. Very good. So Eric, um, do you want to share? Do you want yeah. me to share a little I'll, bit about what we're going to talk about? I'll do mine, and you go. You you can okay. back clean up here, Paula. Uh, All right. Okay. Uh, what I would love for anyone who's joining us in some form or fashion, I would love because I'm going to talk about healthy practice guidelines. 
I would love to see your profit and loss. And it can be private, you can black out whatever you want, but I would love it if you just email back to me what it is, because I wanna get real, man, just like Holt was saying, I wanna get real data that matters to you guys. I don't wanna come in saying, you know, you should be at a 75% overhead model when everyone's at 50%, you know? So, and there's such a wide array of it. So if you want, you can just say, here's my data, please keep it private and I will block everything out or whatever. And I'm just gonna take the data and move it over here anyway and just look at what everybody's averaging. And if you want, you can do like 2019 would be a good year to use if you run your PL. But I'm gonna look at categories of what profit and loss ought to be, whether it's lab, obviously that'll go down with 3D printing. Uh, I'll talk about uh, wages, uh, you know, any overhead part and what the total ought to be and where you're at. And then you can look at, well, wh what am I doing wrong if it's not in line? It could be a collection issue. It could be an issue. It could also be a spending issue. So do that and then, and, and I'll spend a little time on that, but then we're gonna get into just embezzlement prevention and just all the things that can happen that you guys may or may not be aware of. And I don't wanna bring bad news on, but I've had several clients have experience with embezzlement and just some crazy stories that I'll share and ways that you may not think of that I want you to be aware of just to protect you guys. Uh, I don't want anybody stealing your password or ID to your Bitcoin, your Coinbase wallets, or your any of that kind of stuff. So we'll talk about that a bit too. So I'll keep it fun, but it won't be, uh, you know, maybe a fun topic, but I'll try to keep it fun in, in a way that keeps you protected. That's the key thing is protect your money, protect your money, uh, whether it's profit loss or embezzlement. All right. All right. That sounds, that, that's that my sounds tease. Good. That's my tease, Paula. <laughs> there you go. There's your tease. I think, um, you know, so many people have had that go on and same with my clients too and weren't aware. I mean, most of the doctors aren't up front. They don't know all that's going on. They're not looking at the books that close. So um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be informative and something that I had one doctor tell me, no, I don't look at my PL. I don't want to know. I can't sleep at night if I know what my PL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I, will, I will say this the typical embezzlement situation is from the favorite employee they can never live without. I'll, I'll, I'll add to my tease. That's icing on the cake. What's so, one of the warning signs if your employee's driving a better car than you are? <laughs> <laughs> Has more Bitcoin than you. Uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to beat this Bitcoin to death. I'm telling you it's hot. So mm. I, I will say this, there's just some telltale signs that you need to be aware of. And I want to hear from you guys, if you're willing to share, if you doctors want to share that you have personal experience in this, then that's what the mastermind's about. So we can look for all avenues of this and just be on top of it. So, uh, yeah, good. yeah, that's good. Uh, so for for me, I think we'll open the retreat with a SWAT, and most of you know what SWAT is: strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats of 2020 or the last year, uh, March to March, because it's been a challenging year and. But I think a lot of, of good has come of it. Do you, do you guys agree there's some good that's come of that, of this whole thing? Zoom. And, look at Zoom. Look what Zoom is Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. At what we're, <laughs> look at what we've been doing. <laughs> so Eric and I have had fun creating this year and engaging everyone in different ways. And it's, it's really been a wonderful thing. So I think it would be great to just recap and remember, reflect, you know, John Maxwell, awesome author and someone I followed for many years. I've certified through his coaching program and, and um, he talks about reflection. And I'm not really a reflection person. I'm, I'm always looking ahead, like what's next? And it's hard for me sometimes to look back and, and really think about what, what happened there and connect the dots and think about how good that really was. So I think we'll spend some time. So be thinking about your SWAT of the last year and what would you say and how would you encourage someone else who might still be struggling or maybe you're struggling and maybe you need encouragement. Um, the other thing we're going to talk about, a couple of things from Think and Grow Rich. So most of you have read Think and Grow Rich. If you need a copy of it, I have a PDF of it. Um, my mentor, Walter Haley, told us to read it. and We read it and I know many of you have too. It's written in the 30s. It still applies. I mean, you could read it and it, it's like somebody just wrote it today. Um, we're going to talk about the 31 reasons people fail. Now that sounds like, wow, what a fun topic. But, <laughs> but you know, there's some, there's some powerful lessons in those reasons. 
And so <laughs> um, it, it's going to be fun, really, actually going through that and realizing how how good you really are doing <laughs> and then we have 28 reflective questions personal reflective questions so i'm you know i love to be on the the warm fuzzy side of things the life coaching side of things the personal growth side of things my favorite mantra is personal growth precedes professional growth you think about that for your team it'll give you some insight into your team as well when we talk about these um, reflective questions and just like a call I had today, we want to encourage doctors to not just manage their team, but lead their team. There's a big difference in managing and leading. And I think sometimes we get stuck in the management cycle and we have to break out of that sometimes and lead. And we don't always know when that is. So helping your team grow personally is, is part of helping your practice grow. And it's one of the five levels of leadership. It's the fourth level out of Maxwell's book, the five levels of leadership is personal development. Your team follows you because what you have done for them. My doctor did that for me. And I'm sure some of you are doing that for your team members as well. So, um, so those are my topics, Eric. And then we'll have our breakout sessions. We'll use the Zoom rooms. For that, we did it last year. I think I'm gonna have you manage it this year, Eric. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I finally figured it out on the last round. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Pierre will end up in the matrix somewhere if I have to do this. He'll be gone. <laughs> so the Zoom rooms were great just for, for breakouts. So if you uh, want to join us or you have colleagues maybe who are struggling and they, they need some support, they need a group that they can feel safe with, safe with and, and talk about things that are going on in their, their life and their practice and it would be a good encouragement for them, I think. Don't you think, Eric? Yeah, I think it's gonna be power packed. I mean, every you know time I'm around, all of you, I learn so much, and it's just it's just so much good knowledge. Yeah, I love it. So I, I'm I'm super excited. I gotta figure out. I gotta organize all my stuff. But I'm all I'm thinking about is how to learn how to do big full mouth cases. So you know, coin, <laughs> you know, get my Coinbase ready and all this stuff. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> So uh, we also had on the agenda just a short topic, mask mandates, Paula. Can we jump into that? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. The, the, the key thing here is everybody's in a different state, so we can't really talk about this, but here's what's happening. The red states are dropping their mask mandates, and you're going to have people who stop wearing their mask if they haven't already anywhere. And then they're going to show up at your office, and your state dental association is probably still going to say, hey, we're recommending that you have your patients wear a mask. And you're either going to have to ignore that or educate your patients. And so it's going to be your decision. I, I don't want to make this a, a topic for, you know, it starts to get political or whatever. I would just say this. If you're going to continue to have that be a, a part of your process with screening. I mean, I went to the chiropractor day. You just walk in and, and <laughs> they're like, oh, you're in COVID? Oh, take off your mask. I'll take off my mask too. <laughs> It's like everything changes. And so I, I think one thing you're going to have to realize is we're comparing dentistry to dentistry. They're comparing Lowe's to dentistry. They're comparing all these other places, restaurants that can go to dentistry. And if you're going to require them to wear a mask, your team's going to have to be trained verbally on what to say and why it's important. And how do you deal with that? Is your reception area going to be open now? All these things are going to start to open back up and it's the new normal. You got to figure out how you're going to portray that. So I don't really have the answer for you because everybody's different, different states, but I do have you guys, you know, say, hey, let's talk about it, figure it out. I, I just met with Dr. Voral's office uh, last week and they decided, you know what, <laughs> we're going to see how it unravels. We're in California. We'll probably be last to the show anyway <laughs> on that regard. And, and you know what, if, if the state's saying no, no masks, we're fine with no, the team was like, we're fine with no masks. It doesn't bother us. And so everybody gets to make that own call, but the team's got to make that, that decision with you. Good stuff. Good? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's good to keep discussing this because the landscape is shifting all yeah. the time. Yeah. Just never know what's going to be next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'd love to hear from you guys as you go through this, just start giving us, hey, this is what we ran into. This is what we decided in response to that. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Anybody have a comment or suggestion about it before we move on to the next topic here? Anybody dealing with that already? Not yet. Wearing the mask, not okay. wearing the mask. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Follow up on marketing for new patients these days. 
you know, everything we've been focused on over the last, well, since November, I suppose, has been marketing safety. Mm-hmm. And Paul and I have been sharing client videos for a long time on what to do. And it's working. You know, uh, patients are seeing that we're safe. And so those ones either that are your, your marketing to your existing patients that haven't come in, they're more willing to now come in or at least share the video with others. And then the ones that you're reaching on social media or just just your website, however it is, or reverse marketing with your patient sharing it, it's getting out there. And so we're seeing it hundreds is. of views. I, I'll tell you, <clears throat> on our call last month, we talked about this a lot and I'm glad you're bringing it back up. If you want to go to our YouTube channels, you can find that video from last month from February 17th, 16th, I think. Anyway, um, I actually had somebody look at that and Dr. Caitlin, they were inspired by what you did. So I just wanted to let you know that, uh, that you, you made a nice impression there on another, another female dentist was just like, oh my goodness, she was awesome. And, and uh, I want to do that on my website. So, so thank you for sharing that last time. <laughs> Is that your associate there next to you? <laughs> future, future associate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So uh, if you haven't done that already, you know, look at look at that video and talk to us if you need some support. Eric's been great with helping offices get a safety video up and, and do some things like that. So I think the key is w- just do it. <laughs> just do the safety. Talk about what you do for safety and then get it on YouTube, on your channel get that link. And now you get weave or solution reach or whatever you have. And you have a link that you can share out and blast out and ask people to watch, ask people to share, put it on your social media, whatever it is, start to create some free marketing and it's, it's working. So don't wait, just go for it. Yeah, okay. Well, sure. Um, I know we got to wrap up here. Eric, you've got a big birthday to go to, don't you? Yeah, my second son uh, is going to celebrate no longer being a teenager. So it's his 20th birthday. So we're going to go <laughs> celebrate that with some. I think the only thing that's open that we can go do, Paula, is uh, bowling. Go figure. So we're going to put oh, our hands. We're going to put our hands in some nasty, funky COVID bowling balls and go bowling. So yeah. <laughs> COVID bowling balls. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go man. figure. That's open, right? That's the one place we can go. Um, I do, I do, because some some of us join later. I do want to say employee retention tax credit. Yeah. I actually upload the podcast I did today. It won't be released probably till Friday or Saturday, but I already put it on my YouTube channel because it's so good. Um, he's talking about, especially if you're a large practice and you paid your employees and you figured out how to just use your triple P money for 60% of your pay and not 100%, if you want that 60% window, you can, oh, this is going to be good. Here's the word. You can by bifurcate. I thought it was just he was talking about furcations, but it was really a, a, a term bifurcate, which just means you can separate that you're paying your employees as close to the end of your 24 weeks as possible with your triple P money. That then says I use my own money to pay my employees for the first 16 weeks that I came back. I didn't use triple P money. And because I did that, I had more than a 50% loss in that second quarter. I lost 66%, let's say. So now I qualify because I had 50% loss or a government agency mandated that I was any sort of closure, meaning I can only have emergency services, but you were reduced to something other than normal, you qualify. And so it's either one of those, okay? And then you can bifurcate, you can separate your pay on your triple P to delay it because you don't want it to be in second quarter or third quarter because that's when you can qualify for the ERTC, the Employee Retention Tax Credit. $5,000 $5,000 per employee that you pay them in those two quarters, right? So now you have eight employees, there's $40,000 that's coming your way, okay? But your triple P pay cannot be in the way. It's gotta be delayed. Does that make sense? So if you applied for forgiveness already and you didn't put that later date that you spent the money, you're out of the game. And probably if you've already filed your taxes, you're probably out of the game. You'd have to file for an extension. This is going to be an amended payroll tax return. That's how it happens. You get the um, Medicare Social Security credit, but the rest comes in cash back to you. So again, they're printing more money that you can go invest in, uh, you know, I don't know, Bitcoin. (laughs) All right. That's just a a soft, quick view, but you can watch that uh, right away. And then it'll be on the podcast probably by Saturday. I'll send a 
on my social media is where I share those links. So you can find it there. But I, any dentist that you think is going, talking about this, you need to share this one with them. Okay. That Very link. Good. Okay. Thanks for the info. Yeah. Anybody right. have questions about that or what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> I know we didn't get a whole lot of discussion tonight because I wanted the speakers to share, but anybody have a question before we go or anything on your mind or a celebration to talk about? All right, and a lot of everybody. Let's see. There you go. Now, Dr. Watson, you can go because your phone will pick it up. Oh, get it, get it. Okay. Yeah, I've got two computers going here and my phone. And uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I just have one thing. It's just kind of on my on my mind. You know, Paula mentioned uh, earlier about uh, good news. That was I went in for a heart cath. And the previous three times that I've gone in for a heart cath, I've had stents placed. Well, this time uh, I got done with it and they said, you are great. Uh, you have no limitations. Go do your thing. And uh, so I was really blessed by that. And, uh, and then the other thing that happened, and this is uh, really hit me, is um, someone, not a real close friend of mine, but an acquaintance, a, a fellow Crown Council uh, uh, qualified uh, uh, member Richard Platch that I've known for a long, long time. I don't know if Paula, you know him or I know not. Dick. Yeah, um, Dick Flash. He he was he was out walking his dog yesterday and was run over by a car, and uh, he's no longer with us. Wow. So um, it, it comes back to something uh, um, that Jim Pride told me one time. He said, uh, "If there's something you want to do, do it now." So that, that, really, that really hit me. Good yeah. advice, Dr. Yeah. Watson. Yeah. 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 We're very thankful for your good news. And All right. Thank you. Thank you much. Good advice. Too. Looking, forward, looking forward to the retreat. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we are too. Very excited. Okay, everybody. Anybody else have anything they want to share real quick? So Eric can go bowl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. 300 game. Yeah, yeah I, right. Sure. Thank yeah. you all for joining and for speakers. We'll we'll get this recording out for everybody so they can hear about what you're up to and look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, we'll do this next month and that'll be right before the retreat. So, yeah. And if you're listening to this and you're not registered for the leadership retreat, email Paula right away. Um, make sure you get your spot and we'll yeah. hold one for you what are we gonna do 15 doctors right paula 15 is what we're yeah doing? well yeah we're cutting it off yeah all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, all <not>. right <laughs> okay. all right thanks everybody have a good evening okay. bye guys bye. Bye.